So now in this video, we're going to be looking at this circuit in more detail. I'll take it apart, put it back together, but uh, there is the uh, circuit that I made. So we're using a 555 timer, and the uh, 555 timer, though, outputs a high or low signal. So it's uh, basically either on or off, the voltage doesn't slide up and down. And we need a sliding voltage to get this LED to fade on and off. So this is probably... Uh, one of the simplest versions of this circuit and uh, using the values that I used it should work pretty well but uh, other values you may have to modify the uh, circuit a bit so we'll talk about that later but uh, any case there is the basic circuit so the uh, 2N3904 is wired as an emitter follower we're going to zoom in I'm going to turn off the uh, power supply and then just pluck the components really quick because the step-by-step -step build is the uh, easiest way to see what where all the components are and everything so I still have a capacitor on the board there let's talk about that first so this power supply here is uh, not holding the voltage completely steady also we have a lot of you know jumpers here so I got the alligator clips to these jumpers uh, they clip to these jumpers and then plugged into the board these alligator clips come from the power supply and then we have these jumpers here going across the rail there's very small resistances but with changing uh, currents that may uh, shift uh, voltages a bit the 555 timer depends on a pretty steady voltage so this is a 0.1 microfarad the same as a 100 nanofarad value capacitor we're putting it from the positive rail to the uh, negative rail that's all it's doing and so if the 555 timer suddenly needs a little more current than uh, the power supply is providing it can get a little bit of that current from the uh, capacitor and whatnot and the uh, capacitor will help hold the uh, voltage at the rail so you may not even need that but uh, I don't think I do for this particular circuit but when I used other value components I did I there's a little flicker going on and uh, but in any case, I should have put that to pin 8. I should have swapped these numbers. But because uh, that's the power pin right there, pin 8. And then pin 1 over here is the ground pin. And that's how we power the uh, 555 timer. Pin number 4 is the reset pin. So I have the uh, pins written here. You can see ground is 1. So that's a negative rail. And then 8 is the positive side of the power supply which is often indicated by plus VCC. We're using five volts, but this indicates that it's not an exact voltage you need, just the positive side of the power supply, negative supply. So reset pin right there. That's pin four. That's also going to the positive rail. So although I would have rather had put eight there, uh, four is fine too. Uh, this is a good thing to have there is that jumper to the positive rail. Pin number four, the reset pin is waiting for a low signal, so a voltage close to the negative rail. If it's just floating here, it can get stray signals, and maybe the voltage will pick up a negative rail, plus there's stuff going on in the integrated circuit that may cause it to get a low voltage. And uh, so it's just easy to put it to the positive rail, and that eliminates any possibility of that getting a low signal. Now, we have... Uh, these three pins here so they're all really kind of connected together in a way so we will look at their names we got trigger pin number two output pin number three right there and then we come over and other than the power pin for this particular circuit everything on the right here all we're going to use is the threshold pin you can take the control pin and put a capacitor to the negative rail but uh, that just kind of makes it a little harder to uh, build the circuit and uh, explain things. But that also helps stabilize the 555 timer. And most circuits you can get away without that. So we go to the uh, threshold pin right there. So that's pin number six. So you can see here, pin number two and pin number six are directly connected together. So pin number two is the trigger pin. It's waiting for a relatively low signal and then Pin number six is the trigger, or, uh, the uh, threshold pin. It's waiting for a relatively high signal. So the capacitor will be charging and uh, discharging. So once the capacitor gets up to two thirds of the power supply voltage, the output will be set low. 
and then once the capacitor gets down so there's the output it's actually what's going to charge and discharge the capacitor for the most part when the voltage gets down to one third of voltage that's when the trigger pin kicks in sets the output high that will charge the capacitor so the voltage will bounce uh, back and forth between uh, uh, those two pins and so in any case we as I said are going to charge and discharge the capacitor through we're using the output directly right there so this doesn't go all the way up to 5 volts at the output so it's probably going to take a little longer to charge the capacitor than uh, to discharge but uh, it's close to about the uh, same amount of time because the capacitor is charging and discharging between one third and two thirds voltage so we go over here we take the capacitor so this is an electrolytic capacitor and so I'm finding 47 microfarad works really well with the setup I have right now so we got 47 microfarad there this is the negative side of it when you charge these electrolytic ones you need to make sure that uh, the negative side is more negative and the positive side is more positive right there you can discharge it uh, nothing but uh, the chemistry does depend on some charge on it but uh, in any case you can discharge it to uh, zero volts safely but you still want to make sure that side's always more negative that side's more positive when you are charging it so as I said we're dealing with the changing voltage at the capacitor unfortunately it's a kind of a high value a resistor there and uh, so a load will just pull charge out of the capacitor and hold its voltage down and so I find with a 10 microfarad uh, capacitor and then using about a 100 kilo ohm resistor we get the same timing other than the load takes too much uh, current so the capacitor can't charge up enough so as I said if you use different value components you may have to modify this a, a bit but uh, in any case we're just going to go with uh, these values here and I'm going to do those uh, other circuits uh, later and so in any case we come here we're using the 2N3904 so this is wired as an uh, emitter follower common collector and what this does is it takes the voltage at the base and it may be a good idea to put a resistor here especially if uh, the components you're using are not working properly because you just give the base a voltage you don't really want to give it uh, current but I'm keeping this video simple I'm just going to put a jumper to the base of the transistor but in case we give the uh, transistor a voltage and it provides whatever current needed to hold that voltage across the uh, load and so I have uh, this orange jumper here going to the positive rail as you can see the collector so looking at the flat side that's the flat side facing us we have the emitter base collector so if I turn it this way collector is to that jumper right there now for the uh, signal which goes to the base the base is the middle pin we put the uh, jumper there and by the way you can use a different uh, transistor if it starts with 2N and it's an NPN bipolar junction transistor you have to use an NPN bipolar junction transistor in this configuration but if it starts with 2N the emitter is that left pin or bottom pin there the base is the middle pin and the collector is the top pin that's if the first uh, number and letter are 2N at least all of mine are like that so we're going to put this to the middle pin the base right there of the uh, transistor now our load so typically you see the resistor before the LED the resistor on the more positive side and the LED on the more uh, negative side I am going to put the LED first so it doesn't matter the order and you don't always have to drop or wire everything up exactly as you see in the schematic uh, but uh, as long as the anode of the LED the long lead is more positive the cathode is more negative it will light up right there so we're going to put the long lead the anode to the emitter of the 2N3904 transistor there short lead the cathode down here so now we're going to put the resistor from the uh, cathode to ground so they're in series as long as they're in series the same current and everything will flow but uh, uh, the order is uh, just the order that they flow through 
will be uh, different, but that doesn't matter. They're in series, the current flows through them the same, as long as they the LED is in the uh, proper direction. So, cathode being more negative, anode being more positive. So let's zoom back here, and we will uh, look at the complete circuit, and now just put the power supply there. So, power supply is set to 5 volts. I don't want to change that right now. And we hit the uh, power button. And now you can see that the LED starts flashing there. So, as I said before, this works good with the setup that I have here. I think, well, first off, this isn't enough uh, resistance to uh, protect the LED from higher voltage. But I'm just going to quickly go to a higher voltage. And you can see there that it doesn't turn off completely. So we should have used at least a 470 ohm resistor and I should have left that on the board. I did the test earlier and it did not go off completely. And so you have to make modifications to this if you want it to behave exactly the same if you use uh, uh, different components. But there is uh, some different components you can use that will still work like this and whatnot. But in any case, I think this is the simplest form of this circuit and so I'll just uh, make those other circuits for uh, other value components uh, later on. But in any case, hopefully you still enjoyed the circuit. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.